Good evening and welcome to our Ash Wednesday service. I just want to begin with some notices. Our service on Sunday will be a service of Holy Communion and we'll be continuing to look at God is Faithful and that's the second part of the plagues and that will be from uh, 10 to 11 on Facebook and later on in the afternoon on Facebook or on YouTube. Our midweek service uh, next week will be looking at the most important decision uh, from John chapter 3 verses 1 to 18 and that's from 8.20 on Facebook and then on Thursday it will be uploaded to YouTube. If you have any items for the food bank then if you can bring those to the rectory and we'll make sure that they get to Enniskillen. There will be an opportunity uh, during our time of intercession for you to pray something for yourself and something for someone else. And if, if it helps you in doing that, to place a hand on your chest for praying for yourself and to stretch out your other hand for praying for someone else, then do that when that time comes. So we have our invitation to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. Lord, direct our thoughts, help us to pray and lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Come, let us worship. And we begin our service by singing When the Music Fades.
So we confess our sins to God our Father. Let us pray. Together we say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. By what we have done and by what we have failed to do, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that has passed. And grant that we may serve you in newness of life, the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Colic for Ash Wednesday. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading is from Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honoured by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received the reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And continuing to read from verse 16. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil in your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And before the sermon we sing, Abba, Father, let me be, and Father, we love you.
pray that you would speak to us through your word and by your spirit. I pray you take my lips and use them, that you'd speak through them, for your name's sake and for your glory. Amen. Well, in the, the passage we have Jesus in Matthew chapter 6. He says, when you give, when you pray, and when you fast. It's obvious from what Jesus is saying that these are spiritual disciplines that he's expecting that we do. These are things that uh, Jesus knows that if, we're done, if they're done in the right way, that they can lead us into a deeper relationship with God. But there's also the place where these can be done in the wrong way. And rather than bring us into a closer walk with God, they'll actually drive us further away. And so Jesus then goes on to talk about the way in which we should do these particular disciplines. It's obvious from the Old Testament and, and from the New Testament that giving and praying and fasting was a corporate activity as well as an individual activity. And so obviously there were times when the nation fasted, there were times when they prayed together, there were times that they gave financially when we see the the building of the tabernacle they gave as, as a as a people for that work but when it comes to individual giving fasting and praying jesus wants to challenge how we do that he wants us to remember why we do things. He wants her, us to remember that our Father sees what is done in secret. Now, obviously, when we read through Revelations, and um, when we read the letters to the seven churches, we see that there's that emphasis in terms of Jesus knows what we're doing, and the Father knows what we're doing, and the Spirit knows what we're doing. And there's that sense of that we need to be careful about what we do. But that's not the sense in this passage. In this passage, it's more like what we read when it comes to Genesis 16, where we have a Hagar, and she goes away from Abraham and Sarah, and in that place where she's in need, God meets her need, and then she declares, she calls God the God who sees me there's that sense that God sees us when no one else sees us and that's the sense that I believe that Jesus wants us to get from this particular passage that every time it talks about your father who sees what is done in secret he wants us to have that sense of the father cares for us and that the father loves us that's why later on in verse 26 we, we read this look at the birds of the air they do not sow or reap or store away in barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not much more valuable than they and we see time and time again between um, matthew chapter 6 and, and matthew chapter 7 where jesus finishes his sermon on the mount we see that he refers to the father as a father who loves us, a father who wants to give us good things. As we see Jesus talking about, you, if, if you, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask? We read that in chapter 7. And so we need to be very clear that it's about the Father loving us. There's this relationship that is meant to be the most important relationship in our lives. And that we're understanding his love and care for us. And that that's why he wants us to see the, th the right way to do things. So that therefore our relationship with him grows and deepens. And that there's not a barrier there instead. You see that those who put on a mask with other people, there is a danger that they do that with God as well. 
And we're not meant to be hypocrites. A hypocrite is someone uh, that the word actually means to put a mask on. And so we need to be clear that God knows us, he loves us, he cares for us. And so therefore there's no acting and there's no way of earning his love either. And so when we do things, we do things because he loves us and cares for us, not to earn anything from him. Although we do see reward later on. Second thing is reason. But when you fast, put on oil in your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you're fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. There's that sense of that the question is, why are we doing things? Are we doing things to be seen by God or to be seen by men? And that's what we see Jesus saying in this passage at the beginning of it. He talks about those who do things to be seen by men. We're not meant to be like that. We're not doing things to get a pat on the back by people. We're doing things for God and for God alone. And so when it comes to fasting, praying and giving, now the giving here is very clear that it's the giving to those in need. And so sometimes people will use this passage wrongly to, to say that when it comes to our church giving, that we shouldn't have people's names there. Well, often what we see is that when it came to the giving that was to the church or to the, the, the temple or the synagogue, that giving was very public. It was at the feet of the apostles when it came to the church. But when we see it, we see in the Old Testament, when it comes to Chronicles, you look at how it talks about the people. They're listed by name and what they gave their families. There was an accountability there when it came to certain things. And, but when it comes to giving the, to the needy, there's a different emphasis here. The emphasis when we're giving to the needy, it should be in secret. We've all, I'm sure, had cards given to us at Christmas time um, saying you know, that this is a card that's given to you, what your gift has been given to, say, Uganda or whatever. Now, those cards are they're used there to try and encourage people to give to a cause, and that cause is often good, but the card is the wrong way to do things. Because it's announcing, just as Jesus is saying, it's announcing that we're giving to that needy cause. It's better in those situations that we can give in a way that no one else knows. Obviously, when it comes to uh, us wanting to get gifted and so on, yes, we have to declare that we're giving to that cause. But we try our best when it comes to giving, that we're doing it and we're asking the question, why am I doing this? Am I doing it to be seen by others? Or am I doing it to be seen by God and by Him alone? And so that's the questions that we have to ask about the reasons that we do things, the reasons that we give to the needy, the reason that we fast, and the reason that we pray. It should be for Him alone. I can remember hearing a story about a, a, a rugby player and he put a number one on tape on his arm to remind him that when he came to play on the field, he was playing for the audience of one. That that in itself helped him to be a good sports person. That really it wasn't about what other people saw. Okay, people would be cheering for him and so on, but he was playing for the audience of one. He was playing for God and for God alone. And that's that sense that when we do things and the reason we do it is God alone, when we're doing things in the private that are for God alone, it actually changes what we do then in the public. That even if we do something and it's, it's, we're doing it to help someone out, we're not looking for praise from people when maybe someone does see us doing something. Because we know it's all about 
the audience of one. The last thing is reward. Jesus begins the passage by talking about if you do, in other words, if you're doing things to be seen by men, if you're giving to the needy and announcing it, if you do that, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. But then what does he say? We see him uh, three times uh, in his, the words are exactly the same. It's like it's trying to get through to us when, when you give, when you pray, when you fast, if you're doing it and you're doing it for God alone, then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Now we need to be very careful that we don't get into this prosperity gospel that we're saying that we're giving in order to get something back from God. Because Jesus then goes on to talk about that the treasures are treasures in heaven. Often what you hear the prosperity gospel saying is that if you give to this church or whatever, then God will give back to you more than what you've given. And they're talking about in this life. And so the reason for giving is totally wrong. Whereas this is, Jesus is saying that we're building up treasures in heaven where rust and, and, uh, and moss and vermin don't destroy. That's where our heart needs to be. That's where our mind needs to be, as we see Paul talking about in Colossians. Set your minds on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your hearts on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in glory. So we're reminded about where we're going. And that, do you know, we have such an amazing future. And that's the thing that drives us in the present to do the right thing, or it should do. That we're doing things not for any accolade from anyone else. We're doing it because we know that God has given us more than we could ever pay back. There's nothing that we can do to pay him back. It's that love and grace that he has shown to us that then we do things. But then he's saying to us that you have rewards in heaven. There's treasures in heaven that we're building up. We have eternal life. And what those treasures are beyond that, we don't know. And it, and it shouldn't matter really. Because we're doing things knowing that he loves us more than we could ever be loved by anyone else he his relationship the relationship with the father with the son and with the spirit should be our most important relationship and when it comes to uh, lent often when it comes to the things that people think about doing it is often the focus of themselves rather than the focus of god so we end up giving up chocolate for Lent because we're wanting to lose a bit of weight. But then the difficulty is that when it comes to being out somewhere now, obviously during lockdown, people don't have this problem. But when we get out of lockdown and when we're in that place where we're having Lent and, and we are going to someone else's home, the worst thing is that if we end up having to say, sorry, I can't have that because I've given that up for Lent. What you've done is you've announced to someone that you're fasting from that particular thing. It's exactly what Jesus is speaking out against. And so it's better that we, if we can think about things that we can give up or take up that are all about the Father. You see, if we're wanting to increase activities, let those activities be, as Jesus says, only to your father if that's what we're doing then over this period of Lent we will grow in our relationship with the father and so let's look to those activities that we can do or things that we're giving up if we're giving up something say if it's if it's watching TV or uh, for a particular period of time that we're giving up something to replace it with something that is focused on the father 
that's the right attitude. That's the right thing to do in terms of giving up something. We're giving up something that gives us more time for the one that we need to be focusing on. And when we do that, then Lent will truly be a time where we are growing in our relationship with God. As we see Paul talking about in, in uh, that beautiful prayer in Ephesians chapter 3, that we would be rooted and established in love, and that we would have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that we would be filled to the measure of the fullness of Christ. That's what Paul prays for the people in Ephesus. That's the things that we can pray for ourselves and for others that we know. That we would grow in our relationship with God. That we would grow in our understanding of his love for us. Because the more that happens, the more we will do things for the right reason and for his glory. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for your deep love for us. We thank you that, Lord, that we know from your word that you love us more than the sparrows, more than the grass in the field, that we're worth more than they are, and that you care for us so much. Lord, that you see us, you see the things that we're going through, and that, Lord, you know what we need even before we ask, as you say in your word. Lord, would you help us that over this period of Lent we would, Lord, choose wisely the things that we take up and the things that we stop doing. That we would do things, Lord, and stop doing things that give us more time with you. That over this period that we would grow, that we would deepen in our relationship with you, that others would see the difference because of that. Lord, fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. Because we need you, Lord. We are desperate for you. And this country is desperately in need of you. Lord, would you pour out your spirit upon us and that out from us would flow streams of living water, that this nation would be changed and transformed because we let you work in and through us to the extent that you want. We ask this in your name. Amen. So we sing, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart.
and we affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe and trust in His Son Jesus Christ who redeemed mankind. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? I believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When we have our prayers of intercession, let us pray. Father, we pray for the church worldwide, that we may all be one. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all they will under undertake, that your glory may be proclaimed through our lives. We pray for those in need of your touch, and in the silence we bring them to your throne of grace, especially remembering Florence and Jean. We say together, stretch out your hand. Stretch out your hands to bring healing to those who are sick, comfort for those who mourn, and hope to those in despair. And now in the silence, if you want to pray something for yourself and something for someone who's not here. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, who told us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We sing, I will offer up my life.
closing prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, you emptied yourself, taking the form of a servant. Through your love, make us servants of one another. Lord Jesus Christ, for our sake you became poor. May our lives and gifts enrich the life of your world. We say together, Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. O oh, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. And we say the grace to God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, evermore. Amen. So every blessing, and Lorna is going to play us out.